Hey guys, this is Jason from MicrostartingSupply.com and today I want to start a video series called Understanding Electronics and Schematics for the Purpose of Repair. So the reason I want to start this video series is because I see a lot of uh, technicians and repair shops who are trying to get into the board repair business and offer microsoldering services to their customers. Um, but they don't really know where to start. They see uh, a schematic, they see a board with a ton of components on it, and they think, oh my god, what the hell am I doing? How do I start? Do I have to troubleshoot everything here on wh what exactly is even going on here? And I would basically want to dumb down this idea into uh, uh, the component level, section by section, um, into something that anyone with a brain can grasp. So the only thing that's required in order to complete the series is going to be a functioning brain. That's all you're going to need in order to re read a schematic. Repairing a device though, you know, you'll, you'll need a multimeter, you'll need a soldering iron, but we'll go over tools in a little in a future video. So there, I do want to emphasize that this series is only for the purpose of repair. What that means is if you're trying to become an engineer or you want to understand how every component on the board works, this is probably not going to be for you because there's a lot of physics involved in that and that's not something that is relevant to repair or is necessary to know in order to uh, repair a motherboard at the component level. I don't even know it quite honestly and I'm definitely not the one who's going to be qualified to teach you that. So that being said, if you are watching this and you are trying to grasp uh, a basic understanding of how to repair a motherboard at the component level, this is for you. But if you are trying to understand exactly how a resistor works, some of these terms are probably not going to be accurate from a physics aspect. With that being said though, let's get started. Okay, so let's go over a little concept called Ohm's Law. So Ohm's Law is this genius concept upon which all of our electronics are based off of. Ohm's Law says that V, voltage, is equal to I, current, times R, resistance, like that. Now, think of any given DC power supply like this as a water faucet. A water faucet can have uh, three factors to it. It can have the amount of water coming out, the pressure of the water coming out, or the, uh, how hard the water is being pushed out, and it can also have the uh, faucet handle, which determines just how much water is coming out at that given pressure. So, if I want a lot of water to start coming out, I'm going to open my faucet all the way. And what that does is that allows uh, that th that allows a lot of water to come out of the faucet because there is no restriction or no resistance on the pressure or how much water is being pushed through. Now, if, for example, that's too much water and I want to restrict that a little bit, I only open the faucet a little bit instead of all the way. And by only opening the faucet a little bit, I'm going to then restrict the flow or resist the, the flow of water through the faucet uh, and only allow a little stream to come out of the other end. So how would I calculate just how much water is going to come out of my faucet? Well, if for example our pressure or how much water is being pushed out is V and V is equal to 5, then I can use the faucet handle or how open or how closed it is to determine how much water is going to come out in the end. Now our faucet handle is resisting or it's going to allow a resistance. So say our resistance on our faucet handle can go from 1 to 500 where 1 is basically open all the way and 500 is almost closed. So if I want to have a lot of water coming out of my faucet, I set R equal to 1. Now just how many how many units of water are going to be coming out at once? Well, V equals to I, R, where we want to know I, the amount of water coming out. So we say 5 equals to I times 1. So I equals to 5 divided by 1 is equal to 5. 5 units of water is coming out. A lot of water is coming out. Now, say for example, I want to restrict that a bit. Well, let's say 
V, our pressure is always constant, it's still five. And now, instead of having the faucet handle fully open, or one, we're gonna have it almost closed, or 500. Now, what happens now? So, five equals two I times 500. Just like that. Well, when we do the math, I equals two, oops, I equals to five divided by 500, what do we get? We get 0 0.01. Very, very little water can come out of this faucet. So now, how does this apply back to electronics? Well, instead of having a water pressure, we have a voltage, so five volts. Now, instead of having uh, a faucet handle, we have resistance, so 500 ohms. Now, how much electricity is gonna flow through this circuit? Well, I is equal to five volts over 500 ohms equals to 0.01 amps. And so that's how amps, voltage, and resistance, ohms, factor into Ohm's law and into our circuit. Okay, so how does this concept of a water faucet and Ohm's law apply to our everyday electronics and everything we repair? So, take for example, this USB charger. This USB charger is a DC power supply. You can see here, there's a rating on there, five volts at one amp. Now, what a noob does is they take their ammeter, in this case, a USB ammeter like this, and they plug it into their power supply, and they plug it into the wall. And the wall says 5.2 volts at, sorry, the ammeter says 5.2 volts at zero amps. Well. Zero amps, they say. This is rated for one amp. Why am I not getting one amp on the ammeter? Well, remember on our faucet, we have the handle that determines whether water is coming out or not. Whatever that handle is attached to, that little gizmo, restricts or allows the flow of water. But even behind that little gizmo, there's always water pressure or being pushed uh, into the, the little gizmo there that restricts the flow of water on the other end. Now, on our power supply, there's no faucet handle anywhere in order to determine how much current is going to come out. You can see it's just a power supply. So, how do we get current to come out of here? Or how do we get water to flow out or electricity to flow out? Well, what happens when I plug a device in? So, I'm going to plug my phone in. somewhere maybe you can see and I'm gonna plug it in and I get 0.8 amps suddenly this phone is drawing current it's pulling current from the power supply this phone is the basically the uh, the faucet handle to the faucet the phone is what determines or whatever is plugged into the other end of the power supply is de determining what, how much electricity is being drawn or how much current is flowing through the, the circuit. What you have to remember here is voltage is always being pushed by the power supply. It's always present even though um, the gate might be closed or the faucet handle might be closed. Current is drawn by the circuit or the device on the other end. So the, the circuit or the device on the other end is basically the faucet of the handle. When you plug it in, that's when current is pulled or drawn from the power supply. So current is pulled, voltage is pushed.